Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. A lot of you had questions uh, from my last video about ash fall, uh, pirate classic flows, um, how far would the ash go across the United States, what areas are safe and what are not. So I put together a bunch of information for you. Uh, I mentioned how the ash will knock out electricity across the United States and things like, like that. And I'm going to show you some documentation. A lot of the information on USGS has not been updated since 2014 and 2015. And the data that they showed for ash fall is completely inaccurate. But first, I want to show you what's currently going on today at Little West Thumb. This is what the file was showing when I pulled um, the information just a few minutes ago. And it's currently almost 2.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Um, yeah, I reported yesterday about all the magma coming up and I suspect that we're going to be having uh, maybe a dike intrusion there at maybe um, the area of Grant. And this is what it was showing. Um, this A lot of this happened after I made my report yesterday. Yeah, and this here is the earthquake that happened Earlier today, the magnitude 4.2 at Stanley, Idaho. And you can see here by the moment tensor ball how the fault line actually moved up and to the west and we have uplift. So that's the 2.1 and its effect there at Little West Thumb at the western side of Yellowstone Lake. The lighter colors is hot water and gases that came up during that earthquake. And I'll pull it over for you. All these lines marked in red were generated by a computer system. Um, that is so that the geologists can come in and review these earthquakes later. But they're not reporting any earthquakes today. Let me pull this down to the other ones that are in red. Okay, so we got another one there. And several there. And we got one, where is it? Right there. Yeah, look at all that hot magma that came up. It's so hot, it's black here at the bottom. Yeah, the, the uh, darker the color, the more heat. And remember, I told you yesterday that documents that they had sent in to them back in um, 2019 to be peer reviewed and then was approved in January of this year shows that the magma, the pockets of magma, that's what these lighter colors are, are only about 600 feet under the ground where people are walking. One football field is 360 feet, I believe. So a little less than two football fields, or maybe if you want to add in one football field and the size of the stadium, that is the distance of how deep these pockets of hot magma are from all the tourists that visit Yellowstone. This here is the map that most people are familiar with for the ash fallout for Yellowstone. No, they don't show that other one that goes all the way across the United States, do they? Yeah, ash deposits were found in the Gulf of uh, Mexico. We got the Lava Creek ash bed eruption. The Huckleberry Ridge Ash Bed, uh, Mesa Falls Ash Bed, and there's the location of Yellowstone. And I am sure, and I'm sure you've all seen these pictures of ash fall. Now this paper is from 2014. It says here the consequences of a future caldera forming eruption from Yellowstone have been the subject of much speculation, but little quantitative research in terms of regional ash fall impacts. So they simulated eruptions lasting three days, a week, or even a month. They took into account the westward driven wind, crosswind, north and south, and the measurements from millimeters to centimeters on the east, west, and gulf coasts. They have tables here showing the average maximum and minimum deposit thickness in selected cities. Albuquerque, New Mexico would be 73.9 millimeters. That's the maximum. So that would be about almost three inches of ash fall 
Atlanta, Georgia, Austin, Texas, Billings, Montana. Now that's 1,785.6 millimeters. So that would be about 70 inches. Now I want to go down to Nebraska. Oh, I don't see it. I see Rapid City, uh, South Dakota, 330.2 millimeters for the maximum. Now that's 13 inches. And the reason I bring that up is originally in Nebraska, Bruno Jarbridge Caldera eruption. The ash went downwind to the northeast where probably hundreds of animals died at a watering hole. USGS said this area originally had 12 inches of ash fall, but at the site of the fossil bed, it was actually 79 inches deep or 2 meters. During any volcanic eruption, the smaller animals, because of their smaller lung capacity, die first, and then larger animals die later. So, Ash Fall, Nebraska, the fossil site, is near um, Chambers. Let me bring this out and show you where Yellowstone is. Over there, see that? All right, I want to go to Casper, Wyoming. Okay, there we go. The ash fall supposedly there, let me zoom in, was 12.3 inches. Right there. And I also drew out for you um, during one of the eruptions. I drew it out in a gray line here of the ash fall. Over here in Dallas, Texas, I don't know if it was a misprint or what, but I found a paper that said they had 3 meters of ash fall or 118 inches. Maybe it was a misprint and it was 3 millimeters. So that wouldn't be very much if it was millimeters. But there evidently down here in the Gulf of Mexico was uh, tenths of centimeters of ash here in the Gulf of Mexico. Now on AGU, Advanced Earth Space Science, they have different cities and the amount of ash, average, minimum, and maximum. Um, what's the date on this paper? 2014. Um, depending on how the winds were blowing, how much ash they got. So we got Billings, uh, 1,785.6 millimeters. So that would be about 70 inches. I think I covered that already. Uh, Casper, Wyoming, 844.3 millimeters. So that would be about 34 inches. Chicago, Illinois, 29.4 millimeters. So that would be about 1.2 inches. Like I said, I think a lot of this data is really skewed. I think actually they got a lot more ash than what they're saying here. Because this is from 2014. Ash is not like ash from forest fires or coal fires or things like that. Ash has glass in it. Here's a document from USGS about installator flashover because of ash. Well, how much flashover, which means it's sparking, shorting out uh, from the ash. Three millimeters or 0 0.2 inches of ash falls provide a significant portion of installator creep distance, it says. Um, and, it, and more so if it's covered with wet ash. You know, if it rains afterwards or humidity. Distribution to control systems. Ash ingresses into heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Systems can block intake, leading to reduced performance and affecting dependent systems. This is why your airplanes can't fly through it. Line breakage due to ash loading was observed in the following previous eruptions. Mount St. Helens in 1980. Ball in 1994 and Chiton in 2008. And I talked about how all the water would be contaminated. Well, for hydroelectric power plants, it says here that ash suspended in intake water can cause accelerated wear on hydroelectric turbines. Thermal power stations. Oh, you're going to love this. There are a few case studies 
to guide possible impacts or advice. Yeah, I think about the uh, nuclear power plants, right? I believe there's about 120 nuclear power plants here in the United States. There's a paper here, too, about your health. Um, yeah, roofs can collapse because of the weight. Breathing the glass in is very dangerous. Also, it can get into your eyes. And they got more information here. Transportation. Aviation. Ash can cause severe impacts to aircraft. And the presence of ash can result in the temporary shutdown of airports and flights. Roads, vehicles, and railways. Ash fall from one millimeter can seriously reduce visibility on highways and railways. Make roads and tracks slippery for cars and trains. Marine transportation. Ash can clog air filters and water intakes and reduce visibility for marine craft affecting operations. Ash fall for agriculture. Well, you got to think about the animals that are out there. Breathing that in. Says it is very difficult to predict exact consequences consequences and associated costs of potential ash damage or mitigation measures. They haven't even bothered to research the effects on farms. Furthermore, there is a lack of detailed accounts of the effects of ash fall on individual farms in different regions, including the way that farmers and governments have attempted to reduce the damage damaging consequences to their crops and livestock. Now, I've talked about how in the past, when Yellowstone did um, its last major eruption, but there's been 20 smaller eruptions since the last major eruption, how I did a counterclockwise rotation of unzipping. And I was looking at uh, the thumbnails, and I noticed that um, Holmes Hill, yeah, there's been a lot of activity there not being reported and maple creek yep same thing and then um, i showed you already let's see here little west thumb but i wanted to take a look at yellowstone like the other monitor up by the bridge so this here is little west thumb like i said it's by grant and it's still showing activity yep and this comes from a borehole, borehole 208, a very deep well. And this is what it was showing when I pulled the files um, just before I started this video. Yeah, remember I talked about, yeah, see the melt, the pockets of melt. Look how high they are. Look at that. Oops, let me go back. And let's see if I can find that earthquake. All right, it's supposed to be about 211. So this is that earthquake as it came in. And then up here, yeah, we got, yeah, look at all this. Yeah, a lot that they are not reporting. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, I would say, oh my goodness, this is not good. Let me show you something. This monitor is up here at the northern end of Yellowstone Lake, and I talked about the uplift of uh, 9.8 inches. Um, and then over here is Little West Thumb, Grant. And then between the two calderas, we have uplift of 3 feet 4 inches between the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome and the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome. Yeah, I'm not sure how many miles that is. Let me get the measurement out. So let's measure as the bird flies from there to there. Um, 14, let's say 15 miles maybe. And in my past videos, um, I've talked about how the magma is coming in from two different directions. But lately it looks like the Snake River Plateau it's coming in from. But it comes in from the Gulf of California. Um, comes up goes under the lake and then rises up and then moves across and this is why we got the resurgent domes yeah yellowstone lake and we got some more here in red and like i said they're marked in red for the geologists to uh, come in and look at them yep yeah. 
and when you have a thickening of the lines I've talked about that um, let's take a look at the signature yeah harmonic tremors magma on the move and we'll go down to when I pulled the file yeah look at that harmonic tremors screw wave so I'll take a peek again tomorrow see what's going on tomorrow if this activity continues to go on um, hope some of that information I gave to you is helpful if any thoughts or comments or questions please put it down below I'll try to get to your answers uh, thank you for watching thank you for your support please stay safe always be prepared for a disaster but live for today and I will talk to you later God bless you all. bye